All right, interviewing tips. What are some of the biggest mistakes that podcasters make with interviews? They talk about themselves too much. No one gives a shit about you. Stop. Stop talking about yourself. Let the get you book you busted your ass to get this guest. The guest doesn't want to hear about you. They want to talk about themselves. Everybody in the world wants to feel like they're heard and they matter in the world. Stop talking about yourself. So you've done 700 interviews, something close to 700 interviews yeah. between all of your episodes. How do you get guests to like come out of their shell? A lot of times in the beginning of an interview, they're kind of quiet. They're not really feeling the. there's no chemistry there. What do you do before you hit record to kind of bring them out of their shell? Um, first of all, I've done a lot of research on them. I, and I, they know it because I'm going to reference something that maybe no one knows. I'm going to compliment them. I'm going to make them feel like they're in a safe place. Um, maybe I'm going to give them beforehand a couple like rough bullets of like, I'd love to touch on this because I think what you've done in this space is really admirable. And, um, I'm going to let them talk. I'm going to give them the grace to like tell their story. And, um, I'm going to compliment them because it takes a lot for people to open up. So, you know, you just have to be a great listener. A lot of people don't listen. Truly. And I'm one of those people who, okay, like here's an example of my totally, this is my life. I go into a boutique. My husband's trying to find a parking spot. He can't find one. He's annoyed. He wants to leave Babo Island. I have been in a, a boutique for approximately five minutes. And the woman who runs the boutique is telling me the story about how her family's from Mexico. And just because I'm a good listener and I ask questions, which is simple as it is, but a lot of people don't ask questions because they don't give a shit about anybody else. She has said to me, you know, I've never told this to anybody, but my father lived in Mexico and my mother's boyfriend went to Mexico and murdered him. Now I want you to imagine me in that moment. And then my husband is texting me and calling me, asking me if we can leave Balboa Island because there are no parking spots. And I'm like, I didn't answer. He's like, why didn't you pick up? I'm like, she just told me this family <laughs> secret that she's never told anybody to. And he's like, you were there for five minutes. What are you talking? I'm like, this is, this is what happens when you're me. Because I ask questions and I'm a great listener. That's, what, that's all it is. It's not rocket science. It's like just a basic thing that a lot of people don't even do. So do you see your role as a host? to just ask questions and you sound like you're talking a lot about affirmation you're you're complimenting people you're affirming what they're saying is smart and you're making it safe for them to tell you whatever it may be about reality television or their deepest family secrets are you just trying to create a space for them to kind of tell these stories and then just ask questions about what they're telling you yeah i'm setting them up um, to, to tell the story of a rock star. I'm making them feel like a million bucks. Like I have chosen you for this episode because you are such an interesting person and people really want to hear what you have to say and they want to hear your story. I think sometimes podcasters too, when someone's answering the question, they're not actually even listening to the answer because they're teeing up for the next question. And that's a huge mistake. Because if, if people have 10 questions and they're like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh -huh, I got to get to number three. But sometimes you're, the answer that you get for number two might take it out, down to question number eight. You might pivot and then you got to go back up to question number three. Okay, here's an example. I'm inter interviewing Marcus Limonis, who's the host of The Prophet on CNBC, which is their number one show. And he's just like a great, great guy. And... I thought it was going to be 20 minutes and we're just going to talk about how his show has changed the way people look at their, the way they run their small businesses. And then he tells me the story about how he was adopted into a Greek family. And then he goes back to the Greek orphanage in Greece to find out about his birth parents and then finds out he's actually Syrian. So that's like an identity crisis because you're like, wait, I thought I was Greek. So that took me off on a pivot. And we, then he ends up talking about how, why adoption is such an important issue for him and why building families and helping people see growing their family in a different way is important. And then at like 10 minutes later, he tells me that when he was a child, he was the victim of abuse, sexual abuse. Hmm. 
I didn't expect that from a CNBC host. And then we talk about, you know, someone's self-worth and how important it is to tell your story. And that sometimes as painful as it may be to open up about something that it's really not your shame, it's on the shame of the abuser. That's a whole other pivot. So by the end of it, it's not the interview that I thought it was going to be, but it's a whole hell of a lot better because the people who are listening to the interview may never have watched The Prophet, but they're rooting for him and they like him right. and they think he represents the best in people in the world and they're going to follow him for whatever project he's working on. So the next question you should ask is not question six on the list of questions you wrote down beforehand. It's the follow-up questions actually what people are saying because they're going to tell you something so much more interesting than what you guessed to ask maybe a couple days ago. They're going to listen to see if you care. So sometimes it's repeating what they just said in a, in, in a not a formulaic way. People can tell if you're like, okay, and then, and then, and then, and you're going through a list. But if you say something like, wait a minute, this is crazy. So you go to Greece and your parents are actually Syrian? What was that like? Because you had self-identified as, as this, you know, the, the son of a and daughter or son of a, a, a Greek immigrants. And, and, and did that reshape the way you thought about yourself? Like, then they're like, oh God, they're really listening to me. What I say really matters. And I'm going to help somebody in the process with my answer versus somebody who's mm -hmm. like, uh huh. Oh, okay. And you went to a Greek and then you went, found out you were Syrian. Okay. So when you were, um, approach CNBC and they're like, why do I want to go to the show ever again? You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I totally do. I, you could definitely be in these interviews where you see it is question five, then question six, then question seven. And as the listener, you actually, you're only there to listen. And so you can see when the host, actively skips ahead to another question and totally misses the exciting thing that was just dropped right there. And you're like, oh, I can't wait till they ask a follow-up. And then they move on because they didn't even realize what interesting thing was just laid out in front of them. Also, like, I just remember another thing about that interview that's kind of funny that ties into it is that in the beginning of that interview, he's telling me about how his, his parents knew Lee Iacocca and he had gone to Lee Iacocca's house and he showed him this series of photos and it said, and he was kind of thinking, oh, this guy's kind of weird. Like, why is there a timeline? And he said, this is my life story. What's yours, Marcus? And it was just a great story. But when he was telling me, he was like, then I, I met with this guy named Lee Iacocca and my stepfather was like a Lee Iacocca crazy fan, like cuckoo bird crazy and had Lee Iacocca pictures in her house. And and biographies. And I'm like the only person in the world who would probably know about Lee Iacocca. And I was like, I know. Oh, I know Lee Iacocca. Oh, yeah, I could. Oh, like, that's part of my party. And so that was like a funny moment, like two people talking about this guy who ran Chrysler, you know, like 60 years ago. Um, but I think that he appreciated it was like, Oh, my gosh, she's like speaking my language. Like, but I was making jokes about it. You know, it's like, Look at us two nerds talking about a guy who ran Chrysler. <laughs> you know, it's just like, um, but that's, to me, again, it goes back to that dinner party. Like you're at the end of the table and someone's like, yeah, when I was a kid, I met Lee Iacocca. I'd be like, what? Wait a minute. Lee Iacocca? Like random. Can I have another glass of wine? And then you push your chair up. You're like, we got to talk about this. It connects back to what you were saying earlier about you want to be interesting and interested. Yeah. So you have to actually have done the research on the back end to be interesting, like actually have interesting questions to ask, but then you're so interested in your guest that the that you're actually listening and pulling out new interesting stories that other people may not have picked up on. And you also talked about about watching a lot of TV and pop culture and that's a way to connect with people that they know, oh, these are my people. You know, if you hadn't had that experience and under knew who Lea Coco was, you would have gone, okay, like I did, which was kind of you nod and you go, okay, I, I guess that's a famous person. But actually you having that, um, the background allows you to connect with people and kind of open them up a little bit more. I also have this weird tick where I um, remember details about people. So 
I'm remembering everything that anybody has ever told me about their life. So at the end of the interview, I might make reference to Lee Iacocca again with Marcus. And he's like, oh, she was really paying attention. And if I see him five years from now, I'm going to go, oh, my God, remember we were talking about Lee Iacocca? And he's going to be like, oh, my God, she remembers. So it, my point is people remember when you remember. That, that's so true. People want to be seen. And part of what we're doing is when we interview is letting people know you're actually being seen for who you are, not just who I want to portray you as on my show. Correct. I hope this clip gave you some ideas, some inspiration, and things you can try on your own podcast. If you want to watch the full interview, I interviewed Kate Casey for over an hour, and we have that whole interview. Click there. You click there, you'll get to watch the whole video. Keep podcasting.